Hi, my name's Magda the Story Spider, and I've been learning stories from all over the world. My friend Joy asked me to learn this one, and I learned that it has many, many different versions. In Greece, it is known as the oldest story, and it's called Psyche and Eros. In England, they call it White Bear Whittington. In Norway, where my friend Cecil comes from, it's called East of the Sun and West of the Moon. She, in fact, gave me a version of that story. And my friend Mark, who gifted me a Kindle, also gifted me a version of this story. But you will probably know it as Beauty and the Beast. There once was a man who had three daughters, and he loved them as much as they loved him. And things went very well until midsummer, when he had a heart attack. He fell ill, but his youngest daughter knew the healing arts. She was a doctor, and so she took a cup of pure silver, and she went up into the dark forest looking for a healing spring. She looked for three days, and when she found it, she was disappointed. For you see, the spring was now polluted and murky and dark. You couldn't even see an inch down into the water. So the girl, very distraught, very frustrated, just sat down and began to cry. That is when she heard the growl behind her and a voice asking her what was wrong. She turned and there was a great, big, white bear with sharp teeth and claws. But she was so amazed by hearing a bear speak that she forgot to run away. And she simply just began to tell him exactly what was wrong. How much she loved her father and she wished she could make him well. The bear said he could help her. He said he could take his magic and make the water pure again. But only if she would grant him three wishes. Now what she could give a bear, she had no idea. But she agreed. And so he took his white paw and waved it over the water. And it was clear. All the way straight down to the bottom. You could see all the way. She took a crab of pure silver, filled it up to the top, and started running back toward home. And then he spoke. He said, for my first wish, I want you to let me come visit you. Well, that was a little scary, but she had promised. So she nodded quickly and went on her way. A week later, her father was feeling so much better. And that Thursday, the bear came to visit. She let him in, and the next Thursday, he stayed a little bit longer. And the next Thursday, he stayed a little bit longer. And after three months of Thursdays, he asked her for his second wish. I want you to come stay with me in my castle. Well, she had promised. So. She packed a bag, kissed her father and her sisters goodbye, and the next thing she knew, she was standing in front of a castle. This was no bear cave. It was beautiful with lush gardens and furniture out of this world. Now, I don't know if any of you have to share a room with a sibling, brother or sister, but the girl had her own room. Oh, for the first time, she had as much music and books and movies as she could ever want. The only strange thing was really living with a bear. And he was never there at supper time. And she always had to tuck herself in at bedtime. She would put on her pajamas and turn out the light and crawl underneath the covers. But there was always a voice in the darkness. Good night. And then someone or something would lean over her and kiss the top of her forehead. 
but she never saw his face before she went to sleep. That was odd. That worried her a bit. But things were very happy for just six whole months. And she became homesick. I mean, if you had been without your family for six months, you would probably miss them as well. So she asked the bear if she could go home. Of course, he said. She was his best friend. He only wanted her to be happy. And so she packed her back. And the next thing she knew, she was standing in front of her father's house. But before she went in, the bear put his paw on her arm. He said, For my third wish, I just want you to trust me. No matter what anyone else says, I want you to tell me. If there's anything wrong, if you're ever afraid or upset, you would tell me these things, right? Well, of course she would. I mean, after all, he was her best friend. Why would she not tell him? And so she went into her father's house, and there was feasting and stories. She told them everything. She told them about the castle, about her own room, about the movies and the books and the music. She told them everything. Well, except for about the invisible stranger, the good night in the dark, the kiss on the head. She didn't tell them about that until the very last night when she stayed up late. After her father went to sleep, she and her sister stayed up till two o'clock in the morning telling secrets. And so then she told him. She told them all about her worry and her fear. But her sisters, though they loved the girl very much, were jealous in their heart. They wanted their own castle. They wanted all the good things in life that they could have. So they decided to make it worse. They said, oh, you know what? I bet it's nothing like a bear or a man. No, 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 no. It's got to be worse than that. It's got to be a monster of some sort, a great big goblin or troll. Oh, and you know what? You know what? Whenever he's actually leaning over you, you think he's kissing you, but that's not true. He's actually sniffing you because he's going to completely gobble you up one day. But don't tell the bear you know any of this. No, 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 no. Here, just take this candle with you. That way you'll be able to find out who it is. But don't tell the bear because I bet he already knows. And he is going to be really mad. And he's going to have the goblin thing gobble all of us up. Don't tell him. Just take the candle. So she did. She took the candle. And she didn't tell the bear. She let her worry and her fear eat on one another until they covered her entire heart. And when he came to get her to take her back to the castle, she no longer trusted him. She broke her promise. Her third wish. Back at the castle, things didn't seem so great. The shadows seemed darker, and at night, the noises seemed louder. And that night, she had to tuck herself in. She put on her pajamas. She turned out the light. She crawled into the covers. And then she heard the voice in the dark. Good night. And then she felt something. Someone leaning over her. And so she lit the candle as quickly as she could and shoved it up in his face. He jumped back, of course. But she still saw who it was. No goblin. Not even a bear. It was just a boy. A prince with pale hair and white fur clothes. This was her white bear transformed into a prince. This is what he looked like on the inside. And she knew him for what he was. 
Why? Why didn't you tell me you were upset? Why didn't you trust me? Why didn't you tell me you were afraid? I, I had no idea. And then he explained. You see, he had been cursed by a wicked witch who had transformed him into this. From a prince to a bear and told him that if he could not find someone to love him for a full year, then she would take him for her own and marry him off to her daughter, an ugly troll princess who was uglier on the inside than she was on the outside. This was the same wicked witch who murkied the, and polluted the healing waters. This is how awful she was. And he was fading. Vanishing before the girl's eyes, she reached out to try to grab his hand, his sleeve, to save him. But he was gone. Do you know what the girl did? She ran out of the castle, still in her pajamas. She went straight into the dark forest to look for her prince. She was going to save him, bring him back. And she traveled a while, until she came to a clearing, where she met a young woman about her age, a, a maiden making jewelry out of melted down silver and gold, rings and necklaces. The woman saw her as she approached. Excuse me, ma'am, have you seen the white bear prince? Oh, you must be the one that he loves. Well, go on home. He's gone east of the sun and west of the moon, where no living man is ever going to find him. But you're different, aren't you? Wait. And she reached around and gave the girl a golden comb. This might help. And go on down the path. My mother's down there. She might be able to know something new. And so the girl thanked the maiden and went on down the path. And there was a woman of middle age waiting. She was carving things out of wood. Uh, children's toys and swords and walking sticks. She looked up when the girl approached. Excuse me, ma'am, have you seen the white bear prince? Oh, you must be the one that he loves. Oh, girl, go home to your father and your sisters. He's gone east of the sun and west of the moon, where no living man is ever going to find him. But you might. Wait. And she reached around and gave the girl a wooden bow and arrow. She said, now take this. And my mother is further down the path. She might know something that will help. And so the girl thanked the mother and went on down the path until she came to a mighty river. And at this river sat an old woman fishing. I mean, she was doing good too. She had a whole basket full of rainbow trout and stone catfish. She was doing good. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you please tell me if you've seen the white bear prince? Oh, you must be the one that he loves. Well, go on home, dearie. You'll not find him. He's gone east of the sun and west of the moon where no living man is ever going to find him. Oh, but you're not going to give up, are you? Well, hold on. And she reached around and she gave the girl a scaly fin. Came straight from a salmon, it did. And it was huge and reflective. And she gave it to the girl. And then she said, to follow the path further on until the girl would come to the darkest of dark gardens and there she shall find what she would seek. So the girl thanked the old woman and she took the gift and with all of her presence she went on down the path and down and down and down until she did come to the darkest of dark gardens. And there she met the troll princess, looking really bored. So the girl brought out her golden comb and began to brush her own hair with it. The troll princess liked that comb, and so she reached for it. 
almost scratching the girl's eyes out. The girl held it out of her reach and said that she would give the princess the comb, but only if she would take her inside safely to the wicked witch's castle and give her a drink of water. The troll princess agreed and went right past the troll guards and the three-headed snarling wolf right into the kitchen. The girl got her drink of water and the troll princess got her comb and our girl, she only pretended to drink the water because you see, it is never a good idea to drink or eat anything in a wicked witch's castle. Just keep that note. The troll princess was brushing so hard that she completely forgot that the girl was there. So our girl put down the water, fully intact, and went out the door to look for her prince. She found him behind a door in the tippy top of a tower. She opened the golden doorknob and he was sitting there looking at her. But he wasn't smiling. Well, you see, their last conversation hadn't really gone that well. So she reached out her hand. I'm sorry. Trust me, she said. And he took her hand. And they ran through the castle together. They did meet the Wicked Witch at the top of the stair. And so the girl pulled out her bow and arrow and pierced the witch through the heart, turning her into a tree. The guards and the snarling three-headed wolf tried to stop them at the door. And the girl pulled out that fishy scale and it reflected back all of the mean things that the guards and the dogs had ever done. They slunk off into a corner. So our girl and her white bear prince went back to their castle and they promised to never be beastly to one another ever again and to always trust each other until the day after forever. The end. Thank you for listening. Storytellers can't be storytellers without people to listen to them. No mistake.